Hello, I'm Earl Maldrink of Southern Utah University, and I'm delighted to be with you today for a brief presentation about my use of ungrading in a variety of history courses. I wanna share with you, first of all, my proposal for this conference, which is here. And in this proposal, I try to use a clever title to get your attention. That is Doctored Learning, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love on Grading. This is clearly a nod to Stanley Kubrick's Black Comedy of the 1960s, but I, I want to emphasize that I am really trying to worry less about students learning and my grading of their learning in my classes. And I've done this through what some people call ungrading. Also, I believe that this ungrading approach, something I've developed in recent years, is my effort to develop remedies to students' weak writing skills, also to the reluctance to read course materials, including primary source documents, and also to deal with the fact that students often focus on grades instead of learning. These are not new issues, and I know that. But over the years, I've moved towards a, a less of an emphasis on strict grades and more, as I'll talk here today, about on grading. In all of my history classes that I presently teach in Canvas, I use ungrading based on a fairly simple rubric of complete or incomplete with several categories uh, for weekly written reflection assignments, along with discussion posts tied to course readings and uh, often to primary source documents. The rubric assesses the quality of students' responses and the quality of their writing with encouragement to improve both. And then the final grade that students earn in the course is based not so much on the content of these written reflections, but upon their completion, uh, the percentage completion of these assignments. So in using this approach, I can draw upon any number of scholars and practitioners who have written about ungrading. And just a simple search will pull up articles like this one from Inside Higher Ed that uh, goes back to 2019. And this is entitled, this is entitled, When Grading Less Is More. And uh, the author here, Colleen Flaherty, looks at several faculty across different disciplines to assess what they have done with ungrading activities. And the emphasis here is that students reflect on what they learn and it leads to metacognition in addition to often higher quality of learning within the individual discipline. Um, this is just one such example of literature that's out there on ungrading. Uh, one of the better practitioners that I'm aware of is someone named Jesse Stompel, Stommel rather, and uh, Jesse has a website that has some good information, including a very good short piece called How to Ungrade that he put out there in March of 2018. And he begins with a quote from Kathy Davidson, formerly of Duke University, who described grading as a meaningless, superficial, and cynical way to evaluate learning. And so in this short piece, Jesse Stommel, again, at his website, he discusses his own efforts and evolution as an educator to move towards ungrading, which he has done at different institutions. He also emphasizes that there are many different ways and strategies and techniques to do ungrading. So for example, towards the uh, midpoint of this article, he talks about alternate approaches to assessment, and these include grade-free zones, and self-assessment, and process letters, and minimal grading, and authentic assessment, and contract grading, and portfolios, peer assessment, student-made rubrics, and the like. Um, but the key point here, I think, in this particular article is that everybody who is an educator has to figure out for themselves what works best. And I have moved over the years to what I call ungrading through weekly written reflection activities in all of my history courses, whether they're at the introductory level or at the senior level. Another recent article that helped to uh, reinforce my use of this pedagogy was offered in the Chronicle of Higher Education 
by Flower Derby back in uh, September of 2020. And this article was entitled, Seven Ways to Assess Students Online and to Minimize Cheating. And uh, this, I think, is a really good article in part because it reinforces what I'm doing, but I think it also makes clear that because we are turning more and more towards online learning, especially during the pandemic, that we need to find ways to assess what students are doing and also to prevent cheating. So a few comments here about Darby's article, and one that I wanted to really emphasize here is that she suggests that we should get to know each student's writing style in low or no stake tasks. And uh, she asks students to complete weekly writing assignments, and she gets to learn their skills, their weaknesses and strengths as, as writers. And she says that this often works best in classes with limited enrollment of let's say 35 or fewer students. But then she addresses this important point. She said, are you concerned about the time needed to grade those written reflections? Assess them on a complete incomplete scale. With practice, you'll develop the ability to tell at a glance whether students have made a good faith effort to reflect on your writing prompt. And this I think is key to what I do and why I think this system works well for me at this point. And uh, what I wanna do is show you a syllabus that I'm using presently for History 1700. This is American Civilization and uh, it's a very detailed syllabus, and I try to explain to students why I ask them to do what they do and to tie it in with all sorts of things, including uh, learning assessments and the like. Uh, this particular course uses a free online textbook called the American Yop, along with a primary source companion reader called the American Yop Primary Source Reader. And uh, with that, I encourage students to delve deeply into primary documents throughout the entire course. Uh, in the syllabus, I explain some of the learning outcomes for this particular degree requirement. I also briefly address the essential learning outcomes uh, for this class, History 1700, also individual course learning outcomes and the like. But what I want to emphasize here is that in doing some measure of ungrading in this course, uh, students are not expected to take any quizzes or any exams. Instead, their grade is based entirely on these activities, including a weekly history journal where each entry is graded on a pass-fail basis and the completion percentage will determine their final letter grade. Same thing with discussion, posts, and responses. And then for this course, they also have to do an ethical reasoning assignment, a civic engagement assignment, and a primary document analysis at the very end of the semester in which they're given a set of primary documents and then expected to evaluate and use those documents in crafting a narrative interpretation of recent US history. With respect to the weekly reflection assignments, I spell out in some detail what's expected, why we're doing it, how it's graded and the like. And ultimately, the percentage of completed and acceptable journal entries will determine their grade for that component of the course. I, I spell things out as clearly as I can. And uh, again, the, the goal here is to emphasize engagement with course materials and improvement of students' writing, thinking, and reading skills. As I have developed uh, this practice over several years, I've moved away from any type of point-based rubric or uh, graded rubric. And so instead I use one that is, I think, fairly simple, but for me, effective. And I'm going to show you this with uh, an example from this class, uh, an entry for week two, where students are asked to read two chapters in our textbook and then write a prompt, write a response to a prompt about the evolution of racial slavery in North America. On top of that, they're expected to use and integrate at least two primary source documents. This is not an easy assignment, uh, nor are any of these weekly prompts easy, in my opinion. But they're designed to help students engage with the course material and to demonstrate that they are doing the reading and understanding it. In evaluating the weekly assignments, I use this fairly simple rubric with just a few criteria and fairly simple ratings. The criteria include, does the response address the prompt or topic with adequate analysis and insights? Is there plentiful and specific evidence from course materials? Does the response demonstrate high quality writing, grammar, and punctuation? I also look at formatting and any other issues that might pop up. 
I have a time management uh, criterion here, but I will note that at this point in this class, I have opted away from allowing any late assignments unless they have my explicit and prior approval. So they have to submit the assignments on time or they get an incomplete or a zero for that assignment. The ratings are fairly, fairly simple. Exceeds expectations, meets expectations or needs improvement. If students have needs improvement in several of these categories, I will often encourage them to revise and resubmit subject to the following week deadline. And I am very happy to give a student a graded incomplete if they show evidence of improving the quality of their response in their weekly reflection. So that may seem like a lot of work, but in actuality, it, it goes very quickly. As suggested in the article that I referred to earlier, I'm pretty quick in grading the assignments. I also usually save uh, a handful of exemplary responses each week. I remove the students' names and then share those with students as, as examples of what the better quality responses are each week. So that is what I'm doing to uh, emphasize student learning and to maybe take away some of the stress and strain that I feel with respect to uh, grading students' assignments. Um, it's not foolproof, but it's something I've been doing for a few years now and probably will continue to do for the foreseeable future. Again, I appreciate your interest in this topic and look forward to interacting with more of you during this interactive um, visual uh, conference. Take care.